interviews when we're in India together. But what is this whole thing about rejuvenation of soils? Why is that so important to India? Because everywhere we went, people are actually talking about it, which is amazing to me. That's right, Sam. Well, India is a country of uh, more than a billion people today. And India has been growing food and it's self-sufficient. Now what has started happening, the farmers were using one kg of chemical fertilizer. That's kilograms. One kilogram mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. organic uh, chemical fertilizer and producing almost about six, 15 to 18 kgs of food. Mm -hmm. Now over the years, the soil has depleted and with the use of same one kg, they can produce just about six kgs. So that is almost a degrowth of 2.5 times. Yeah, I mean, that's just absolutely incredible. And when you look at the, the map of India, the size of it, how it's spread out, mm -hmm. the key location it has as far yes. as uh, Southeast Asia, right. uh, actually they call it the Indian subcontinent. That's you know, it's true. that large. That's true. But agriculture is actually going on absolutely everywhere across India and almost half the population's involved, I understand. That's absolutely true because Indian economy is totally dependent on agriculture. Totally dependent totally. on agriculture. Uh, I'm sure you must be knowing about it, but I'll share this with you. More than 60%, maybe about 62, 63% of the population is dependent on agriculture. That's incredible amount so, of money. Agriculture is the backbone of the economy. Mm -hmm. So we have to look after agriculture because it will feed us and at the same time it's going to feed Indians in times to come. Yeah. And it's divided into a number of states. How many states are there uh, and, and the population densities across those states? Are they fairly well, balanced uh, or is some higher than others? In India today we have 29 states and 7 union territories. Mm -hmm and we are the largest democracy of the world. And as your former president coined it, for the people, by the people, and of the people, right. we proudly say we are the largest democracy of the world. And India has tropical weather. So there are parts of India where we have farming of food, which is wheat and rice. Rice, we produce the largest amount of rice. Then mm -hmm. where I come from is Bihar, which is almost, uh, second largest, most populous state of the country. And we, we produce the largest amount of vegetables. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, it's amazing how the various states uh, are so diverse, quite different. I mean, even when you look at the, the clothing and the style yes. of living and all yes. that's quite different. And uh, yet, but they all fit together. Yes. Samuel, and of course, you've had uh, tens of thousands of years to, to work all that out. That's true. We, we have almost about 22 languages in our country and 700 dialects. 700 dialects. dialects. That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. But why is India so important to the world? This is something that, you know, I, you know, I visited there a number of years ago. I've been traveled the whole country. But, you know, over the last five or six years, there's just more about India. It's all around us. You know, yes. it's always about well, China and all that. But now India is really coming uh, to the fore. We are the growing economy. We are the growing, growing economy. And as agricultural stance, I proudly say, India is the only country which is addressing the soil health issue. Mm -hmm. It's the only country which is addressing the soil health issue. No other country, to the best of my knowledge, is discussing the soil health. Well, the whole thing about that, Bobby, is the fact is when you talk about soil health, yes, but the fact is, is the nutrients that are coming from the food to the people is depleting all across the globe and it seems like India has really taken this to heart and saying, you know, we need to have these nutrients because our people need to have the sustenance That's and right. the populations continue to expand. That's right. If you, if you are an uh, Indian lover, if you see the Jura Veda in chapter 30, it talks about the juice of the soil. Mm -hmm. So India wants to put the organic matter back to the soil so that plant can draw nutrients and the productivity will go up and gradually the farmers income will go up and India is one of the fastest growing economy and if I'm not wrong maybe Indians the Indian youths between the age group of 25 to 45 we contribute to be number one in the world yeah that's that's absolutely the truth and when you look at this map with the population density mm -hmm. I mean it's just like it, it's bright red 
are a little bit of red almost over the whole face of India. Yes. Yes. And when you go there, you realize just the density That's of true. the population. That's true. But yet That's true. the whole whole time that you're there, even with this density, mm -hmm. everybody seems to have their own space, mm -hmm. and you see food absolutely everywhere. That's true. So tell us about this essence of food in Indian culture that's so important. See, I, as I shared with you, Indian economy is an agricultural economy. So food is, we are self-sufficient. We are self-sufficient in food today. Mm -hmm. But the need of the R is not of self-sufficiency, but increasing, doubling the income of the farmers. Now, our Prime Minister also is, is this is on high point on agenda, on his, uh, on his agenda, to double the farmers' income. Mm -hmm. Because India is a big country and the economy is totally dependent on the agriculture. So if the farmers are happy, Indians will be more happy. Indians mm -hmm. are very happy people. Yeah and they'll be more happy. Yeah, one of the things though we haven't really mentioned is the number as far as the middle class, the mm -hmm. true middle class of India. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about you're the largest democracy, 1.2 plus billion people. Mm -hmm. the United States is you know, the third largest with 300 and about 20 million people. You actually have more middle class in India, about 375 million, than we have in our whole population <laughs> in the United <laughs> States. Now this is something that, you know, we're sitting here and laughing about it, but most people would be amazed to understand the actual real numbers of the middle class uh -huh. in Indian society. Uh -huh. And so when you talk about agriculture as 60, 62 uh percent, -huh. and yet you have this huge middle class, where does this meet as far as the middle class because they're demanding more and better food, and at the same time they're doing that, the farmers are saying, well, we're gonna produce better and more food, but we want it ourselves too. How, how do you work that out? Well, this is what drives the economy, the middle class. Mm -hmm. The middle class is the fastest growing in terms of wealth. The middle class gradually moving ahead. And as, as I shared with you, we're one of the second largest, uh, fastest growing economy in the world. So the middle classes are the ones who are going to benefit the most. Because then they have bigger share in the pie. And that is how they're going to spend money. And that is how the country is going to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going back to this as far as doubling the, the income, I mean, that's really an audacious statement that that's your right. Prime Minister has made. Right. And he's really pledging it. He's given a real date to that by right. when we want to achieve it. Yeah. And so uh, how are the farmers taking this? The fact is, you know, the government really is listening to us. Mm -hmm. They're trying to connect with us. The middle class is, you know, starting to engage with farmers, which yes. hasn't been true in the see, past. Uh, How is all that working out? See, government is taking a number of initiatives to double the farmer's income. Mm -hmm. One of the major initiatives is on the productivity. As I shared with you, we have the land, we have the workforce to work on the land. Now, if the farmers get double production from the same land, that is the area where government is concentrating. Mm -hmm. Now, I being a soil en entrepreneur, you can use soil enthusiast, you can use. I am totally of the view that the production will increase only and only if the soil condition is improved, mm -hmm. soil health is improved. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the government of India has established so many soil labs. Now, the farmers can give it to soil lab for testing of the soil and the government will use that now, information. What is the soil report card? Tell us about that. Why, well, and why is that important? We're see, going to see an image of that. It's shortly. another beautiful initiative as I'm discussing with you about the mm -hmm. soil. The soil health card is like farmers in India have been used to farming the same crop again and again. Now soil health card is being established. As I told you, in India there are 718 districts. Now, government is promoting that you bring the soil to us or send the soil to us. Mm -hmm. It'll be, we'll test it in a lab and we'll give you a report what best can be grown and what new practices you need to adopt to improve the productivity. So the government is becoming uh, really a stakeholder as far as the farmers are concerned because in course. the past it was almost hands off, the farmers are okay, no. they're going to do their in own. Fact, but uh, now the government is becoming the very engaged. That has been an allegation which mm -hmm. at least I don't uh, agree to mm -hmm. because farming government cannot ignore. My country's economy is totally dependent on farmers. Mm -hmm. 
it's the backbone of the economy so government keeps on addressing and at the same time government subsidizes the uh, fertilizer cost and this providing seeds etc cetera, etc cetera. we bobby we're going to we're going to go out of here let's look at this the looking at the let's just go out on the soil report card i like that idea how do you see that expanding and growing as far as the farmers are concerned and the government over the next, say, 5, 10, 15 years? See, uh, Sam, uh, if we you got to be about, quick, we only have about 20 seconds. Okay, so we, we come back on this. Soil is most essential to give the nutrient to the plant. Mm -hmm. Now, if the soil health is good, the plant health will be good. And mm -hmm. also the food's going to be good. Food's going to be good. Okay. This is Mohit Bobby Alwalia, Agricultural Soils Rejuvenation Consultant. For the KBK, the state governments of India, as we create the Campbell Planet. <laughs> I surrender, I surrender. All right, pal. Get ready for the day, buddy. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Do we have a gun? What's up? Do we have a gun? Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made this vacation happen. Double points with every purchase. Cleverly merging promotions. Love it. Cross-referencing travel sites and booking all your flights with those. Vouchers, I got us bumped. They were like, oh, but now they're like, <laughs> aloha. You aced this vacation. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. I tried Oxy at a couple of parties. I thought I had it under control. I didn't know it'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. What to expect when you're expecting. Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the- Mom, you don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> To the Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Hello and welcome to the Emerald Planet as we look around the globe for these thousand best practices that we talk about on a week-to-week -week basis. We're looking for what we call the best of the best. As we look at a country called India that actually is on the move, its economy is one of the fastest growing on the planet, maybe number one or number two. And at the same time, it has the fastest growing population outside of the African continent itself. And maybe India has already gone past China as far as the total number of people, well beyond 1.2 billion, maybe 1.4 billion. At the same time, it has one of the most prosperous middle class. Actually, they have more middle class than the whole population of the United States. That I find absolutely amazing. And I have a gentleman that's going to talk about all this as it relates to agriculture, which really is the backbone of the Indian economy, but really the society itself. It's the backbone of the whole society. This is Mohit. He goes by Bobby Alawalia. He's an agriculture soils rejuvenation consultant, agricultural development trust, KVKs, and also state governments of India. And Bobby, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you, Sam. Glad to have you here. And I, uh, for full disclosure, I spent about 24 days with you <laughs> traveling right. all over India. And it's an amazing country, and I've been there a number of times, and actually I just learned to appreciate it and enjoy it Thank much you. more. But uh, looking at India, you see these youth running through the, the rice paddy here. Tell us, what does that image tell us about India? India is vibrant. India is growing. India is moving strength to strength. And the youth of the country 
are the ones who are going to be future rulers of the country. And if the youth is fresh and uh, is in good health, the country is going to prosper more. Yeah. And that's one of the things about agriculture. I just love this photograph and this little guy in the back is trying to catch up with the, the larger children. And it really is about uh, India because, you know, we've always talked about, you know, other big countries, but India is the one now that's really people are starting to focus on mm -hmm. and be very serious about. But one of the things, the, the serious aspect of all this, and this I learned as I was traveling there, is that there's a real need for water it has one of the highest rainfalls in the world that hits actually on the Indian subcontinent, right. but much of it runs off. Oh. And a lot of that has to do with the soil itself, right. which really goes to the work that you're doing. Right. So why, you know, huge rainfall, mm -hmm. but the soil is not grabbing it and putting it back in? What's going on there? Well, uh, if, I, if you allow me to say bluntly, it's because of the chemical fertilizers which the farmers had been using from the last 30 years. This is going back to the green revolution of the 60s yes, and 70s. The, we, had, we, we paid this price because of course it uh, increased the productivity, the, company be, uh, the country became self-sufficient in food, but the soil, the soil regi regeneration is required, what is required, what is the need of the hour, the soil health is depleted to such a level that water is not penetrating and it's being wasted. Yeah. So I'm going to look at this. 100 million people, poor water quality, mm -hmm. and 54 uh, percent of the groundwater wells are decreasing. And I saw that when I was traveling because I went to right. you know yeah. all different areas of, know. Uh, of know. India. And this is not atypical what we're looking at right here as far as, you know, got all this rainfall, mm -hmm. but yet it's not getting into the soils. So what is happening now, this focus, you know, as far as the, the soil report card, the focus of the government on rejuvenation, I mean, you really is kind of the leader of the band in India for this rejuvenation of the soil. Mm -hmm. So what is happening now is changing the minds, but also the focus as far mm -hmm. as the government is concerned mm -hmm. to really work with the farmers well, that's right. so that you're improving the quality of life yes. for everyone equally. Right. Uh, to be exact, you know, the government is, in some parts of the country, government is very seriously thinking of water, uh, farmers using drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. With the result, the water is not wasted. And then at the same time, our country has a couple of very good rivers. So water is in plenty. But the only thing is that certain parts of the country it rains and certain parts of the country where it doesn't rain because the farmers are depending, dependent on rainfall for irrigation. So we need to improve the irrigation facilities also mm -hmm. in certain areas and certain areas facing drought and certain area facing flood at the same time. So that's also a challenge. Yeah, and the whole thing about it, Bobby, is <laughs> when you're there, you understand this is going on simultaneously. That's true. You got a drought in one state right. and the other people are, uh, you yes. know, being washed yes. away, literally. But uh, if you see the history of India, the states, the states, which had good water, good canals, produced more. The productivity was much more there than the states, which didn't have well uh, the irrigation facilities up to the mark. Mm -hmm. So the country is really working on it. And uh, to the best of my memory, only recently, about four or five months ago, maybe six months ago, our prime minister visited Israel. And there, the discussion, the main agenda of discussion was bringing in the drip water technology to India. Yeah, so and actually he probably was meeting with uh, the father of drip irrigation. He's actually right. been on Emerald Planet TV several oh. years ago uh -huh. and was talking about this uh, very point. And I saw actually some of his technologies right. that he developed when we were in Baramanti, That's Maharashtra right. State, That's right. That's right. the KVK there. That's right. But the KVKs are uh, this uh, Agricultural Development Trust. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that really are trying to seek this balance. Mm -hmm. And what we have this image in front of us, this balance of the food, mm -hmm. of the water, water and then actually being able to save that food so mm -hmm. that the people actually get it. Mm -hmm. And we understand that there's a lot of this food that's wasted. So you're producing it, mm -hmm. but a lot of that's not getting to the consumer. How that's, do we strike that balance? Uh, that's, that's a very good question and uh, our country is really working on it. Mm -hmm. How to save or how to increase the shelf life of the food. So solar, I'm sure you will be doing one of these interviews one of these Absolutely. days. Mm -hmm. Solar cold storage is a big thing in the sense that the crop 
which is grown or the vegetables which is grown by farmers don't go waste but goes to the cold storage. Yeah, so, and actually the gentleman who's uh, leading this in India is going to be on, you uh, know, that, on my, the Emerald my Planet My guess was TV. right, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've already talked to him and yes. it's already set up. Yes, but we're gonna, what we're doing is we're going to combine the solar drying mm -hmm. with the solar cooling, so you're doing both, mm -hmm. and then you elongate this. That's right. But looking at organics, I know that this is something that you're looking at. Exactly. How do you balance the organics, you know, with, you know, the chemical use of fertilizer, mm -hmm. you know, kind of going in inverse proportions. Mm -hmm. How do we do that so that we, you know, farmers are not being asked to just well, switch to organics, uh -huh. but they're allowed to produce, but they can understand that they can use less chemicals mm -hmm. and improve the soil health. Yeah. Uh, Sam, uh, it is in the fitness of things that I share with you what I feel. I'm of this school of thought that don't do away with chemical fertilizers. Chemical fertilizers have given you green revolution. Chemical fertilizers increase the productivity. Now the only thing is you have to tame the heat of chemical fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Now how do you do that? You do with organics. Mm -hmm. You give back to the soil what is required. The organic matter is required in the soil which will build the soil and plants will draw nutrition from the soil because plants get food from the soil and right. if that is done the productivity will automatically go and when we are talking of organic matter putting it back to the soil I'm talking about hum humic matter humic acid and in such a way that the soil is regenerated it's no more depleted yeah I'm going to leave this up here this is something I found absolutely fascinating in this agricultural sector and all the different areas the government along with the farmers and the KVKs, the Agricultural Development Trust, mm -hmm. again, are working together in all this. But they have this, uh, this motto, and actually it's, it's a real movement, is that, you know, uh, less water, more output. That's right. You know, and there's a phrase for that whole thing, and I, I really like that. Tell us about that, and why, are, and farmers seem to be embracing that. Right. Okay. Well, KVK is a Government of India initiative. KVK stands for Krishi Vikas Kendra. To explain you in English, I would call it Agri Agriculture Center. Mm -hmm. An Agriculture now, Development Trust, as that right, was you know, translated. Various trusts run it, various mm -hmm. government agencies run it. Depends on the functioning of the KVK. Got it. Now, this KVK, there are, as I shared with you, there are 718 districts in India. And believe me, there are 695 KVKs. That means almost one KVK per district. Now, some are performing very, very well. Mm -hmm. Some are below the mark. Some are just, you know, struggling to improve. But this is a very good initiative of Indian Council of Agricultural Research. Mm -hmm. So the farmers... And we're seeing some of this actually here in this photograph, some right. of this work of and vertical farming. The KVK you visited is one of its kind, and I'm sure you'll also agree, mm -hmm. it is... Uh, the KVK and it's it's run by Agricultural Development Trust whereas all these other KVKs are not run by Agricultural Development mm -hmm. Trust and it is under the dynamic chairmanship of Mr. Rajinder Pawar you had the honor of meeting that great man who has a vision for farmers and it, that KVK what you saw is a role model in the sense that it is helping farmers not only in soil it is helping in animal husbandry, it is helping in horticulture, it is helping in floriculture, everything. everything. Yeah, it's you just saw absolutely it yourself. amazing, uh, what, about 150 plus or minus acres. Right. And you, when you were there, yes. if it's in agriculture, it was yes. going on. Yes. And I mean, you, they even you transported see, the sea right into the middle of the And you could see desert. in those four days, 400,000 farmers coming yeah. there for, you know, educating themselves what is good for crop, what is not good for crop, what to do and what not to do. Yeah. So that is KVK. Yeah. And I, I put this uh, image up here of this gentleman. He's on his cell phone. He's got his laptop in front of him. He's an Indian farmer sitting in the middle <laughs> of his field. Yes. You know, and, and uh, you know, we kind of laugh about that. But this is really what's going on because the they're, you know, this 460 plus thousand farmers that, and I was standing in the road. Right. Every one of them had, you know, a cell oh, phone. Oh, yes. And See, they were using it. And the government is using the apps. See, India is an uh, IT country. Mm -hmm. India is the IT country. So now the government is putting in the best use of apps for farmers. 
-hmm. So they can inform farmers over SMS or WhatsApp what is good for the soil and which crop they should, uh, as per the uh, soil lab test report, which crop and then grants also. The farmers get the information of the grants which they're going to get from the government. Yep. from time to time. We got about 20 seconds. What do you see for the growth and expansion of the KVKs, but more particularly trying to address well, soil health? Uh, soil health is, uh, all, all KVKs have soil labs. All KVKs have soil lab, and soil health is what's going to drive, you know, drive the farmers. How they improve the organic matter in the soil. Because fertilizers, they're already using them. So, yeah. so now they have to get this balance between the organic exactly. and the soil. Exactly. This is Mohit Bobby Alawalia, Agricultural Soils Rejuvenation Consultant, KBK State Government. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. <laughs> so how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, mm. the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Wow. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. I know. <laughs> 150 over 90. 180 over 111. 160 over 110. I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. the Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Hello, and welcome to the Emerald Planet TV as we look around the globe for what we call the best of the best, the thousand best practices, technology, services, products, processes, and the people. All those P together go together as far as how we're going to grow the planet that's going to about 9 billion people by 2050. And then looking at the focus on the country of India, over 1.4 billion people may be already there, if not within the next few years. And so I have a gentleman sitting right beside me who is in the middle of that, coming from Bihar State, very beautiful, dynamic, and populated area, as I found out. And yet at the same time, India truly is on the move with one of the fastest growing economies on the planet. A, a IT company and country because it's using that for agriculture. And I think, Bobby, this is something that's very really important. I need to introduce you. This is Mohit Bobby Alawalia, Agricultural Soils Rejuvenation Consultant, working with the KVKs, the Agricultural Development Trust, and the uh, it's kind of the extension service of India, if you will. That's what I think of uh, with the land-grant universities in the United States and the state governments of India and you balance all of that and you do it very well because I was traveling with you. But looking at the, the challenges, the opportunities, and the future as far as agriculture in India, and you're really trying to get to the best practices. This is something that 
not only is India wanting to show and exemplify best practices, it wants to be a best practice. What is that mentality of where India really is working towards itself being a best practice, not just having a lot of different best practices? Mm -hmm. See, uh, the best practices, when you talk about best practices, is uh, the support the government is providing to the farmers. Now, India, as I shared with you, is an IT country. So the government has come up with apps. Government is providing information to the farmers. And they're so, doing this, and I want to interject this because many people think about in the United States with laptops and all that. India really is leapfrog, you know, way beyond that where most of the farmers and many of the homes because of lack of you know consistent energy and all that mm -hmm. they're using you the know the idea. cell phones the mobile phones right. literally for everything right kids for their education the farmers for marketing and how to plan for their crops right. and the right. businessmen and right. all that and then ladies so these apps where are these coming from and and how is the government generating these and then getting it out to the farmers See, government is, I shared with you, the soil labs. Once the soil labs, once, uh, let's say, if I'm a farmer and I've sent my soil for testing the soil lab. Now, when I send this soil to the soil lab, there they have the data of my name and my mobile number and all other details and what crop I'm growing in which area. So through this app, through IT, they are informing me as a farmer what I should be doing, mm -hmm. which crop I should be you know, growing on my fields and what inputs should I be putting in as per the health of the soil. So when we talk about the soil health, we're talking about four, five things essentially. One, what is the water? That is the moisture, mm -hmm. how good or bad soil is. Number two, we're talking of life, the microbes which are there in the soil. And this Plant is really health. critical. Yes, this is really critical. We are talking about how the plant, which I'm growing, draws maximum number of mineral nutrients from the soil. Mm -hmm. So this, all this information, the government will provide and government is encouraging to use the organic path. As I understand, the organic path doesn't mean leaving aside everything which is chemical. Mm -hmm. Like the state where I come from, the dynamism of the Honorable Chief Minister, Mr. Nitish Kumar, and the Agricultural Minister, Dr. Prem Kumar, they are the first ones to have organic corridor. Now, this organic corridor is not talking of only organic growing. Mm -hmm. They are saying, how do we assist the farmers with organic farming? That is, putting in back the organic matter in the soil, mm -hmm. and the farmer using the chemical fertilizer also, and his productivity is going up. Now looking at this, uh, I saw this everywhere I went, and I was really in some remote areas just like in Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. And I jokingly say the only thing that were passing us on the road were monkeys and camels. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were that far out there, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. But yet you get to the end of the road, and here's a whole village that is all solar powered. That's they true. weren't on the grid, all that's, solar powered, that's true. and they were using it. And many of these were women, as we see in this photograph here. Mm -hmm. And they were incorporating that in not only education for the children, but in their developing their own industries. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of that around agriculture. Mm -hmm. So how is India incorporating these renewables, the renewable energy, right. into agriculture? Mm -hmm. And then this in turn allows people to use these apps that the government's providing right. on all these cell phones. Right. Which everybody seems to have one. Right. So uh, the agricultural field is using solar. Government is pushing a lot of funds in solar, mm -hmm. like I shared with you about the solar uh, cold storage. Mm -hmm. and the, similarly, what you saw in Rajasthan, I, I'm sure it must have taken to the villages, where they are irrigating through mm -hmm. solar pumps. Yeah, I saw that everywhere. And actually, they are drawing water and using the solar pumps to irrigate. Yeah. So that is how it is growing and that is how the government is uh, providing all the... Yeah, help. but one of the things I found out about this too is that they're actually, uh, because they're, they're capturing the water, mm -hmm. putting it into these injection wells, mm -hmm. they're actually raising the water table, right. which had been depleted, depleted because we saw that, the 54% depletion rate as far as the, the wells are concerned. concerned. And uh, this one village, just similar to one I showed here with the solar panels and the women with the, the crops, mm -hmm. is they had raised the water table one foot. Right. 
within that area. And you see the produce here. This is actually going in to produce this increased amount of food with more nutrients. Right. So how, how does the government balance that and then these KVKs, well, the Agricultural Development Trust, mm -hmm. bring all this about for the farmers so they get access to all the inputs they need to increase their productivity see, and their income? See, some states have started rainwater harvesting. Mm -hmm. Rainwater harvesting increases the water level. Right. And with the result, after the rains are over, the same water can be used for irrigation purpose. So that is one of the initiatives which government is again taking to improve on the water level. The water level which has been going down over the years, and now the water level has started moving up. So that is how the government or there are NGOs, non-government organizations, we are promoting to increase the water level. Yeah. So that it can be used for irrigation. Yeah, I went to a number of different villages that are actually doing that. But I, I was amazed that within three years, they raised the water table yes. one foot. Yes. One foot. That's yes. incredible. Yes. And so they were capturing all that, and we went to the injection wells. I mean, it's a real system so, they have. And we're looking at this complex uh, photograph here of all these different crops from, you know, tea in the high mountains, mm -hmm. the, the hill stations, right. all the way down towards the sea. Uh -huh. So doing all that, capturing this water, mm -hmm. there must be many different ways of doing that. Of course. See, India is a tropical weather country. Mm -hmm. So the farmers, large number of farmers are still dependent on the rainwater mm -hmm. for irrigating their farms. Right. So what you see here is that various places, as I feel I'm a very strong believer for agriculture purpose, you don't have to go to the classrooms, you have to visit the villages. Yeah, yeah. that's where it's farmers. happening. That's where it's Th happening. Yeah. That is what is required if you are, that's the need of the R. Talk to farmers and they give you more inputs than what is in the classrooms. Yeah. Well, looking at this, this gentleman here, we have a call from Esther of San Diego uh, talking about how are the farmers themselves feel like they're being engaged, being respected, being part of society because in the past it's just like you had the farmers here, you had the middle class, the college educated, it was all this division. But now she's saying is it seems like that the society itself is more trying to be a whole and to support one another. Yes. Is that what you see? Exactly. Just like this gentleman here right in front of us. Yes, exactly. See, as I shared with you, more than 60% of the population is dependent on agriculture. Mm -hmm. So no matter what profession you take, you have roots there in the village. So when you have roots there in the village, you're not forgetting your village. So the roots are the economy, the backbone of the economy is the agricultural income. Yeah. And we're looking at it here where you're trying these new techniques. Uh, also, the drip irrigation you were That's talking right. about. That's we right. talked about the, right. the trip, the prime minister to Israel. Looking at drip irrigation, what is that actually doing? How does that really work? We're looking at a setup of this, but how does that actually work and how does that relate well, to the plant, but also, Bobby, to the soil? With drip irrigation, the beauty of drip irrigation is it is giving the desired amount of water to the soil mm -hmm. for the plant. Nor are you overdoing it, nor. See, Israel did it because they didn't have water. Mm -hmm. And that came as a blessing of disguise to the world. That's the, it's a gift of Israel to the entire world. This technology is so beautiful and so, as you, as you saw it in Baramati yourself, they were using drip irrigation in all the farms. Well, they were actually using it in hot, what we call hot houses, right? You know, and, and uh, they were one of using the places, it uh, one of the places in India where the rainfall is minimum, and they are growing sugar cane, which requires water all the time. Yeah, and it, this is one of the things that was amazing. You're talking about the canals, how they had put this that huge is, canal oh, yes. system, you know, across there, and all of a sudden. And then, of course, sugar, with right. the, the amount of sugar that the Indians eat, right. I mean, that's a, that is a real cash crop. There's no doubt about that's right. that. That's right. But we're seeing this, this mechanization, and we're getting to the end here, Bobby, but uh, you, you have these small plots, right. millions of people involved, mm -hmm. but yet India is a large-scale agricultural production country. Right. And so how do you see that balance? How are people actually seeing the equipment? Well, Heavy, heavy equipment coming in and, and farmers that are still doing things a lot yeah, by hand. Because the f farm holdings 
is very small mm -hmm. compared to other places. Mm -hmm. A farmer has a very small holding of land, but with the invasion of new technology, he is also educating himself and there are NGOs which are educating the farmers the best farming practices which he need to adopt. Mm -hmm. so then only his productivity will go up. Otherwise his productivity is not going to go up. If he is not ready to be in tune with times, how is his productivity going to go up? Yeah. And the whole thing about it, we have this huge fill of corn. This is part of India as well as these very small, small plots. But looking at this doubling of the income of the farmers, we have to be off quick. Right. How does this rejuvenation directly relate to this doubling of the income of the farmers? The doubling of income will come only if the soil health improves, which farmers need to improve. See, he has a set of land which he cannot increase, so he better produce more so that his income doubles. And also to use less input at exactly. the same time. Exactly. To save on the cost. Bobby Alawalia, thank you, sir. As Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. Yeah, and the salary. Oh my god, yes. I right? mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents, and <laughs> right before, yeah, right. so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know? Thank you. It's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? To the Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock. I come to you on a weekly basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we're looking around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. I'm President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet and the Emerald Planet TV. And we're looking across the globe in many diverse countries, looking for those best practices that, as we say, can be used across 10,000 different villages, regardless of the continent and regardless of the language, the type of people, socioeconomic background, whatever it may be, total diversity. But at the same time, how can these be applied to increase the quality of life as we go to a planet of some 9 billion people by 2050? And I have a gentleman sitting right beside me who is in maybe the world's most populous nation now, maybe, about 1.4 billion people. It's uh, being rumored now, so beyond where China is. But this is Mohit Bobby Alawalia. He's an agricultural soils rejuvenation consultant working with the Agricultural Development Trust, KVKs, and also a number of state governments in India. And I had a chance to meet many of those governors and the ministers of ag during the time I was with you. And uh, that was just really an excellent opportunity Thank to you. see the interior, the inside of India as it's actually changing not only the, its inside, but it's actually its face to the world. 
and that's incredible. And it's just like these young people on the back of the scooter, you know, showing the flag, their energy, their excitement. But India is like that. It's a very dynamic. It's a, it really has a certain joy about it. I know. That it, it's just everywhere it's right. around you. It's in its food. It's, it's in, uh, you know, every aspect of society. But looking at all this, how is that you're trying to help, mm-hmm. you know, through your consultancy, you're reaching out to the state governments, mm-hmm. and I, I've been to eight of those with you, and then also as far as these KVKs, these Agricultural Development Trust. So the work that you're doing, reaching into into there, but at the same time, you're taking that and you're bringing that to the outside so that the farmers, there's over 60% of the population, has a better life. Right. How do we do all of that uh, and do it quick? Uh, well, Sam, I just shared with you about uh, my vision. Now, I'm this school of thought that India will improve on its doubling the income of the farmers not through seeds. My thought process is not seed centric, but it's soil centric. Mm -hmm. My area of working is soil, Mm -hmm. how to build the soil. Now to build the soil, as I shared with you earlier, Mm -hmm. the humic matter, the organic matter must go back to the soil. As you visited India, and we were in a couple of states, the KVK, the best example is KVK, Baramati, mm-hmm. under the leader of uh, dynamic leadership of D- Dr. Mr. Rajinder Pawar, mm-hmm. who is the chairman of the Agriculture Development Trust, he imported humic acid in liquid form made out of coal from USA. Mm-hmm. That yeah, was that's amazing. This this connection and also u- using coal for that because right. it's but it's not only increasing the value for the farmers but also increasing the, the value for coal exactly. for Americans. Right. So we imported it and. Uh, the KVK used it and the KVK organized a seminar how to double farmers income mm-hmm. after a span of one year after this product was put to test. Yeah and the whole thing about it too this is all fits in with the central government because it's right. saying by 2022 I believe That's is right. the date right. we must double not we should we right. must double right. the income of the farmers right. correct? So that's what I'm sharing with you there we met the farmers who were going vegetables, there we met farmers who were going pomegranate, there we met farmers who were going grape, grapes, there we met farmers who were going sugar cane. Now well, everyone, rice and wheat, you know, everything. Everything. Absolutely everything. But the results which we got of the humic acid which we imported, they imported, made out of coal in liquid form, was huge. Mm-hmm. And gradually, with passage of time, now the Grape Growers Association, MDRS, which is based out in a place called Pune, mm-hmm. they have placed orders because they use their products in various farms, mm-hmm. different yeah. farms. And then another dynamic company by the name BVG, under the leadership of Mr. Hanuman Rao Gaikwad, he placed orders again, humic acid made out of coal in liquid form, and he's importing from USA. Yeah. Now, the whole thing about this, we also learned as far as the chemical uh, fertilizers that people are going from the pellets, mm-hmm. they're going to liquid form. Right. And so this fits in with what's actually happening as best practices as being taught through the KVKs right. and through the, uh, the government offices. Why liquid form and not the pellets, which is what uh, we used when I was a, you know, a kid on the ranch. All right. I, I'll just share with you. A couple of hours ago, we went and met uh, this farmer, Lawson, Mr. Lawson, at Lawson Farms in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Now, he is another person, I thought he's speaking my language, he is using only fertilizers in liquid form Mm -hmm. from the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now, why why moving away from the granules, which is, when I was a kid, that was most popular, now to liquid? He shared what was my thought process that when you put the liquid form it is going into the soil but when you're just throwing the granules it is not hitting the soil some remain on the soil so he was of the opinion I don't know whether right or wrong that only six percent of the chemical fertilizers is being used when you use in granular form Mm -hmm. so he was a big advocate of using uh, you know 
chemical fertilizers that also in liquid form yeah and this whole thing about too is just like when i take my uh, vitamins every morning i you know i have many of them now are more and more becoming in liquid form right. because it's easier to absorb by the body mm -hmm. but some of them are like uh, the multivitamin is still in the pill form right i crush that mm -hmm. and i take it to it's a powder right so, Mix a little liquid with it, right. and I'm taking it. So this is really the same thing you're talking about. Fertilizer to the soil exactly. is the same thing as See, we as humans Sam, intaking Sam, vitamins and minerals. Sam, when I'm talking of the soil health, I'm just comparing a plant with a human body. Mm -hmm. Now, doctors over the years decided what should be my body temperature. If it's below or higher than that, I fall sick. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the doctors decided what should be the blood sugar level. Mm -hmm. The doctors decided what should be the blood pressure level. Similarly, if we are giving back the organic matter to the soil, the plants which is drawing the mineral nutrients from the organic matter, which is there available in the soil, filtering it, the plants will be healthy. Now, once the plants will be healthy, the requirement of pesticides will also go down. Now, this is the thing that I find really fascinating. This is something that I've observed over the years, is that as you increase the health of the soil, right. you increase the health of the plants, right. they have their own antibodies, just right. like we have our own antibodies. Absolutely And right. we can ward off, and the right. plants can ward right. off the right. insects, right. and the molds, and the mildews, and, uh, and the, the, all the other uh, Dr. pests Saad. that go into it. Dr. Saad, who has been using liquid humic acid being imported from USA mm -hmm. in liquid form. Mm -hmm. His claim is that with the use of this, the soil is improving and the pesticide requirement is re being reduced by almost 80%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and from also too, is, uh, going back, and this is something you and I have discussed, you know, ad nauseum, as far as the, uh, the organics versus the chemicals, mm -hmm. but you are seeing this inverse proportion as you right. have more of this going in on the right. organics, right. that there are less and less use as far as the chemicals, right. and then the soil health improves itself. Right. And then also the, the, uh, the root structures actually grow much larger, right. much, deeper. much deeper. So what is happening into, into the soil itself as those roots go deeper and deeper into the soil? And then how does that increase the, the, uh, the aerobic and anaerobic bacteria mm -hmm. quality in that soil, which is what this is all about? See, as I've been talking to you about, when I'm talking about organic matter, what I mean is humus humic matter mm -hmm. and humic acid. Mm -hmm. Now, whatever little research I have done on this subject, the molecule of the humic acid is such that it allows the benefits of the chemical fertilizers mm -hmm. for plants, which is required. The plants also require these chemical fertilizers. You can't do away with that. Mm -hmm. But gradually with passage of time, once you build on the soil, you can reduce the quantity of chemical fertilizers. And a country like us, India, why is government insisting on doubling the farmer's income, the productivity, because they want to reduce the cost of the inputs also, yes. once the soils are built. And that's something because these chemicals are very expensive, and it is the taxpayer's money which is being rooted through the government to the farmers mm -hmm. in way of subsidies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you have over 60% somehow involved in agriculture, right. that's a lot of money that's, lot of that's money. going out. And uh, I, I just love this photograph of this gentleman <laughs> walking through the field. And, uh, but, you know, India is such a beautiful place. Mm. And everywhere you go, it's so diverse. You know, the, the, yes. the geography is as, as diverse as the people. Right. So looking at the soil types, uh -huh. how do you determine, I know you talked about this apps that the government's providing, right. the farmers have them on their yes. telephone and yes, all that. that's right. How do you determine what that area, wherever they're from, no matter whether it's in Rajasthan, a Maharashtra, mm -hmm. or a Tamil Nadu, mm -hmm. how do you determine what the, the soils in that area needs and in turn how that impacts the quality of See. the foodstuffs that's being produced in those areas? Mm -hmm. See, as I talked to you about this KV case, these soil labs, these soil labs are situated in that particular state. Mm. So they are giving report of that particular soil, which is there. So it's unique to it's each unique. of those state and yes. actually those and, districts and too. And Sam, believe me, if you Google or if you just see that, no country in the world is talking about the soil health. Mm. And the uniqueness of this soil health is this is the area which needs to be addressed. See, genetic GM foods, highly debatable. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. But soil health, no one is debating on that because everyone wants, because my country where farmer is, is the country's economy, imagine if the farmer is just doubling his income, how the economy will boom yeah. and how this middle class will graduate to a higher class. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also, too, is what you're taking as far as the, the number of middle class, that's going to expand. Right. But also, you're going to have a number of these agriculturalists are actually right. going to start joining right. the middle class. Right. And, and uh, as I was sharing, I will just share with you in place in Bihar, the educated boys are coming back into farming. I just, uh, you know, I'll just share with you uh, uh, as an NGO. Jaya Prabha Mahila Kendra under the dynamic leadership of two boys, DK Singh and uh, this guy, Deepak Shah. They are pumping a lot of money to bring in the food, that is the surgeon food, high with protein, and which was never grown in that field. And it is only because of the soil reports they have been advised to grow this crop. Bobby, we're out of time. This is Bobby Alwalia from India, working with the ABK, state government. Bobby, thank you for being with us.